Okay, so now we want to look at how to take the derivatives of products of functions. If I have, you know, multiply two functions together, how do I take that derivative? Okay, so what we're trying to look at is what is the derivative of f of x times g of x, right? Cool. Go back to our definition, our limit definition of the derivative, right? And we're going to say the limit as delta x goes to zero. I need my function evaluated at x plus delta x. So f at x plus delta x times g at x plus delta x. That's my f times g evaluated at x plus delta x minus the original function f times g of x, g of x, all over delta x. Now, at this point, we're wicked stuck. Some smart person stared at this for a very long time and figured out that we can bring our magic tool of adding zero to bear on this problem, okay? We can always add zero or multiply by one, right? So that's what we're gonna do. We have a very, very clever form of zero. So I've got f of x plus delta x, g at x plus delta x, minus, and I'm gonna take f at x plus delta x, g of x. But now I've changed. I've changed from the previous. So in order to compensate for that, I gotta add that right back, right? I'm essentially just adding zero. So add f at x plus delta x, g of x, minus f at x, g of x, all over, all over delta x. So this, I've subtracted and added the same thing, so it's just zero. I haven't changed anything. Sweet. So I look at this and I go, oh, okay, I've got a common factor right here. F at x plus delta x, I can pull that out. So limit as delta x goes to zero. I'm gonna pull that F at x plus delta x out. And I've got G at x plus delta x minus g at x. Now that's starting to look like a derivative, maybe. Derivative of g. Let's see, what about on the second one? Hmm. It looks like I have a common factor of g of x in that one. So let's pull that g of x out. I have g of x times f at x plus delta x minus f at x, and this is all over delta x. Okay. Hopefully things should sort of starting be starting to jump out. This g at x plus delta x minus g of x over delta x, that looks like the derivative of g. And here I'm getting f at x plus delta x minus f at x over delta x. That's looking like the derivative of f. So let's see if we can tease our way out of that. We have some limit rules that are going to allow us to do some stuff. So I can split this common denominator, right? Um, I think I have room enough for one line here. So I have the limit as delta x goes to zero of f at x plus delta x times g at x plus delta x minus g at x over delta x plus the limit as delta x goes to zero and just this piece, right? Splitting that common denominator apart, g at x 
f at x plus delta x minus f at x all over delta x. Okay, so I did actually do two operations on that line. I split the common denominator apart, and then I split the limits apart using a limit rule that says I can split sums. Now we're getting very, very close. Um, I don't have enough room, so I gotta go up here. Okay. So we have the limit of a product is the product of the limits. So I can split these multiplies apart and say I have the limit as delta x goes to zero of f at x plus delta x, this, times the limit as delta x goes to zero of g at x plus delta x minus g at x over delta x. Okay, so I've just split this apart as a product using that limit rule. And I'm going to do the same trick on that piece. So I've got plus the limit as delta x goes to zero of just the g of x times the limit as delta x goes to zero of, we've got f at x plus delta x minus f at x over delta x. Okay, we're very close now. Here, if I let delta x go to zero, so it's arbitrarily small, this, then this, that just vanishes, and I'm just evaluating f at x. If my delta x is vanishingly small, I'm just at f at x. Yeah? So the limit as delta x goes to zero, just f at x. This... That's the derivative of g now. We've got g at x plus delta x minus g at x over delta x. So that's the derivative of g. And I'm going to use the Newton speak just to keep it written in line. So we have f of x here times the derivative of g plus, now g at x doesn't care about delta x. It doesn't even have delta x in it. So that's essentially the limit of a constant, right? Delta x is going to zero, but g of x doesn't care about it. It's just g of x. And that second piece, well, that is the derivative of f. Yeah? f at x plus delta x minus f at x over delta x. By definition, it's the derivative of f. And now it doesn't matter, right? Because addition is commutative, but subtraction is not. So we'll find in the quotient rule, the order does matter. In the derivative case, it's a sum, so the order doesn't matter. And for that reason, I'm gonna choose to always turn these around. To say, you know, I I'm taking the derivative of f at x, g of x. So this is the first function, that's the second function. And what I'm going to do is always take the derivative of the first function first and the derivative of the second function second. It doesn't matter because it's a sum and addition is commutative, but I might as well keep it ordered in my brain so that the quotient rule is easier to remember as well. So I'm just going to turn these two around and say this derivative is, well, take the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. That's the product rule. That's it. We just proved it by definition. So let's quickly see. Let me, we haven't proven uh, the derivatives of tangent or derivatives of uh, trigonometric functions yet, but we do, I think I gave to you, or if not, let's just do it quick. If this is the sine, cosine, negative sine, 
negative cosine. I was thinking about trig, right? Cosine is the x, sine is the y. Derivatives go this way. So the derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is negative sine, derivative of negative sine is negative cosine, and around we go. Okay. So we haven't proven those rules yet, but um, just to have some examples to play around with. Um, actually, I'll just leave that for now. Uh, let's take the derivative with respect to x of x squared sine of x. Okay, so I'm stuck with this product. There's no algebra, there's no polynomial long division, there's no factoring, there's no... I'm, there's nothing I can do to get out of that product. So I'm going to have to use the product rule and say, okay, this is the derivative of the first function, so the derivative with respect to x of x squared, multiplied by the second function, sine of x plus the first function x squared times the derivative of the second function so times the derivative of sine just to be clear about what's derivative of what okay now, normally, to be honest with you, I just do that derivative as long as it's simple enough to do. Um, I wouldn't probably actually write this line, but just to illustrate how that how we're using the um, rule here. So power rule, two x subtract one, so two x sine x. So there we took the derivative of x squared, multiplied by g. Then I've just got my regular x squared, and the derivative of the sine is the cosine. And we're done. That's the product rule. Now, let's say I wanted to take the second derivative, so the derivative of the derivative. So if I was taking the derivative of this, now I have product rule to do twice. Right, here's a product, so I'd have to do this one. And then here's another product, so I'd have to do that. In fact, why don't we just do that? Um, we're going to take, this is the derivative, so we'll take d squared, uh, dx squared, the second derivative, so I'm going to take the derivative of this derivative. Well, the derivative of the first, the derivative of 2x is just 2 times the second sine of x, plus, I'm still working on this first piece, right? This is a product, so I'm still doing that. I've got the first one, just straight, 2x, and then times the derivative of the second, the derivative of sine is cosine. Okay, so this was product rule applied to this product right here. Now I need to do it again on this one. So it's plus, derivative of the first is 2x, times the cosine of x plus the first, just straight, x squared, times the derivative of the cosine. Well, the derivative of the cosine is negative sine. So I've got sine of x, but it's negative. And now let's see, we have some like terms we can combine? Sure. Um, looks like 2 minus x squared sine of x, 2 minus x squared sine of x, and then plus a 4x cosine x. Nice. First times derivative of the second, derivative of the first. Yeah, that looks good. So we had to apply, on the second derivative, we needed to apply product rule twice because here we had a product and here we had a product and then we just combine our other terms. Awesome. Okay, so that's an example or a couple examples of using the product rule and um, 
actually an example of taking a higher order derivative, the second derivative, derivative of the derivative. Okay, I'm going to keep this one short. And in the next video, we'll look at chain rule because that'll make doing the quotient rule, uh, the proof of the quotient rule will be stupid easy. All right.